I guess if I was setting back looking at a rancher, I would just think, man, how, how would maybe not every single person enjoy a life like this? But there's a lot more to it than just what happens on the, on the good days or during the good moments. So there's going to be two or three of the kids. I think Straighten and Wake are going to be on a horse. I think Ty. Uh, yeah. So we'll trip those two gates right there and push them out with the cows. Perfect. Okay. I don't know. It might require more than just those kids, but I just don't want to dump 200 at once and I'll be a. So when we brand them, I mean, the, probably the key thing is to get a brand on them. Um, not everybody brands, but we brand where we go over on the rangeland and it's so wide open. Um, we have neighbors, um, I mean, so a lot of these cattle will not be seen every single day. I mean, I, I still believe there's some of them that we don't see every time we go over there, and there's some that we probably only see a, a few times a summer. So having that brand on them can always um, mark the identification, you know, proof of ownership and stuff like that. First one's the hardest, right? Yep. Catch it. Okay, we're ready. You ready? Well, I'm not ready, but... Ready or not. It won't choke him down, so it'll have him captured, but not choke him. Dally up, Ty! Dally up! So, these calves are obviously they're males, are, males are females, bulls or heifers is what we call them. So, we don't want them to, we don't want bulls, we, so we make a steer out of them, and that way they're, they're better for the market. I have a lot of family here, probably about half family and half half friends that we have. Um, most of the guys roping and cowboying are just some really good friends of mine. My brother is, my brother is helping me rope, but I think Johnny's just a friend. Uh, Justin, one of the other ropers, is just a friend. So just just a good group of people. They help me. They usually come and help every year. Numbers. When he sells them, then you know how many you have beach. Always get a good turnout for Brandon. Not not many people say no when you ask him to come do this. I'm Carol Olson, I'm Dusty Olson's wife, and we live here on this ranch in Neola. So my role is the food. 
if there's ever a, a, an event or a whatever, I'm in charge of the food. I'm in charge of the bill paying and just make sure everything's paid and up to date and um, and that. Um, I will take jobs like with branding, but I take the easy jobs. I take like mark if they're heifers or steers. Like those are my jobs. But I do all the money. Dusty doesn't really have anything to do with the finances. I mean, we talk about it, but I'm over. I do all the finances and um, that type of stuff. And usually, if the kids have to go anywhere, that's me. That's where I'm. That's where I go. I grew up in what you would consider downtown Roosevelt. And so I grew up with lots of neighbors and just, I mean, the neighbor's house was like 10 feet away, I, really close. I mean, it was really close. And so my dad had a few horses, but no, I didn't grow up with this lifestyle really. So this is something that I have really grown to like. When we first started um, getting those 20 cows, I knew that I probably wouldn't be, you know, a huge part of it because I just, I just didn't get it. And so I have really grown to like, I really, when we, when we first were married, we lived right in Neola and I actually really wanted to move back to Roosevelt because I just, I liked the neighbors. I liked, I, I wanted this picture perfect yard and just wanted everything to be, you know, like the cookie cutter. And um, so I really wanted to move back to Roosevelt and then when we built over here, I still had a hard time just because it was such a longer drive to town. I had a hard time getting used to, if I needed milk, I was 20 minutes to town to even get milk or, you know, I, I had a hard time getting used to that. And then it just really grew on me. Ready? Holy cow. Holy piss, can you believe that? Kinda got beat up. So soon as they're old enough, and not only the cattle are old enough, but as soon as the snow melts in Maybell and, and the grass can start growing and get, get some forage over on the ranch, we like to take them over there. And we, we do this on semis, we usually haul them about 40 pair. We can put 40 pair on a semi. Probably the hardest part of taking the cattle to Colorado is to get everything in pairs. So we calve everything out in usually two big groups here at the house. And getting them the right cow with the right calf, always keeping them paired up is a challenge. You just kind of have to learn that and make sure you have them paired up right. We've had them where we didn't have them pair up and you end up with what you call a dogie. A dogie is a, a calf that's not with his mom and they just do not grow. Um, our trucks will be here in 30 minutes. So, and then we'll start loading trucks. No, oh, I hope that we don't get too much snow. I can't even get in over there. You mind throwing her off? Yeah. What are you throwing? Everything but about that much grass hay. Okay. Grass you got a knife? Yeah. Save a chunk of grass for the goat.
Maybell. So we'll head to Maybell, Colorado. Um, it's about, about 135 miles away from from the home base here, and it's it's about 15 miles south west of Maybell. So I'll usually haul about 15, just depending on how many, but. I'm usually 15 to 18 loads of pairs. By the time I get my bulls and everything over here, 15 to 18 loads over, and um, about the same amount home in the fall. And so it's it's a lot of trucking. If there is one drawback to to having to cabin in one place and summering in another, is the trucking. But uh, it's not too bad. I try to do most of it myself. Let him go! Gosh damn you guys, get around! Hey, don't ride with your hand on the horn. Why? Because you don't need to. You can... Is that your guys' high speed when you're getting around them cows? Or is the park brake on? I keep forgetting. You want cheese? Yes, Did you say yes, turkey, or roast no, beef? No, you want roast beef. Did you really? Hair. Where's chips? I don't. If you want chips. I want ruffles. Will you walk up there and close that gate that we let the cows out of? I just don't like it hanging open. I love that my kids are learning a lot of life skills that can't really be taught. Okay. Now just push this off her ears all at once and let her spit the bit out. Don't jerk it out of her mouth, just let her spit it out. Or jerk it out. I didn't jerk it. <laughs> Some it days ready. just aren't great and you just have to get through them and you have to, you have to keep going. And so I love On that my one. kids, um, that we are doing this together. I think we're creating a ton of memories for them. I don't know if all of them will Do continue that, farming or ranching after, but backwards. I think my okay. kids, if anything, are learning to work hard for what you want because the harder you work, the better it becomes. I mean, there's some things you can't predict, but you have to work hard in order for things to work. Over the top rail, okay, your hand goes under there backwards. Build the loop, then it comes under. So now, then pull this tight, and then what I do is put this tail through here because these horses get to learn. They can pull on that and they'll be loose. We'll put the tail through here and then they can't get loose. I see a lot of bulls with both horns still, yeah. so. Good find. First brown horn of the year. Second brown horn. Yep. Oh, like that one shed horn, the bigger one she found is probably 30 bucks. You know what I mean? That's $30. The little one she found is probably $15. So 
it's free Twinkie money every time I come over here. The hard part about ranching that is getting harder, and I think it's, it's I know that it's gonna continue to get harder. In order to run a cow, it takes so much land to run a cow, and the price of land is just going up. When we first started and first got in, and maybe even a little before we got in solely on our own, um, it used to be that a cow, if you were willing to do the work and run the cow, that she would pay for the land and she would make the land payment. That is, that is not even close to the case anymore. By themselves, they, they will not pay for the land. It requires, it, it requires so much land to, to run a cow and that land is getting harder and harder to obtain, more expensive. And so I, I believe that the cow-calf guys, like, like we are, that raise them from birth up and, and summer them out, it's kind of a dying breed. It's, uh, it's just becoming so expensive to, to obtain land. And so it's almost like if you don't inherit all of it, it's gonna be a tough challenge. That's, that's not every case, but this is gonna be a lot of cases. Yeah, don't sit on that. Okay, we're out. Drive safe, see ya. Love ya. Love ya. Bye. Bye-bye.